and sit down. Hello again, welcome everybody to another edition of the Rural Report. I am your Rural 2IC, and today we're going to do the very, for whatever reason, controversial topic of bartering. Now, real quick, I understand and yet don't understand the monstrous infighting and controversy over bartering. If you think bartering is an extremely bad idea, perfect. That'll work for you. If you've got it figured out, then, then that's great. Prepping is all about yourself. So if you know how to do something, then if it works, continue to do it. If you don't, then it's one of those ones that you're going to wish that you did. So in prepping, you prepare for it. So if me, I believe in bartering and if it turns out that bartering, you know, is a bad idea because nobody's going to do it, then great. I will keep all of my barter items and use them. If you think that bartering is a bad idea and you don't have any bartering items, you know, you're the one that loses out. So uh, we're going to go through and run through, let's see, five different items slash topics and we're going to do the reason that I hear a lot of, of why people don't want to barter that topic or item. And then I will give you my opinion on why it's probably a good idea. So let's go ahead and jump right into this and let's look at number one. All right, let's go ahead and start out with a fun one. Number one, bullets and weapons. The one that I hear the most about, no, because you will need them, and they will be used against you. So, yes, absolutely, I agree. Uh, anything that you have can and might be used against you. And that doesn't have to necessarily be that you trade somebody a bullet or a knife or anything along those lines. Uh, you can trade somebody a shovel or whatever, and it can be used against you to harm you. Um, maybe that's even more of a reason not to do it. Uh, for me, I think that you leave out people that's already in your community or, you know, family or whatnot, that if you have a thousand rounds of 12 gauge and they're a little bit better of a hunter, then when they run out and they come to you and go, Hey, uh, I'm running really low. Can I, you know, barter this to get 20 rounds, maybe it's not such a bad idea. Maybe it's one of them ones that, you know, uh, six months down the line after everything's hit the fan that your cousin, you know, made it up three states to your homestead or, you know, your bug out location or whatnot. You trust them. And so why not barter with them? Really, when S SHTF happens, you're going to need to have community. Just because somebody's not in your absolute inner circle doesn't necessarily mean that they're out to harm you. So it's the same thing with your neighbor. Right now, we're in times of peace. And so if your neighbor came over and you've lived across the street from them or two miles down the road or whatnot, and they asked you for whatever on you know a bullet or a weapon or whatnot most of you probably would be like absolutely mr smith or you know mrs smith here's what you need and really it shouldn't change in shtf if you trust them before you probably will trust them after depending on the situation so for me it's all about the situation do you trust this person if you do why not barter with them Somebody comes in and they need, you know, they have no weapons and 
you want to be able to sleep so that way they can do security, why not barter with them, you know? Uh, I understand the people that are extremely against this. I get it. I'll, I'll, I'll know I'll see this in the comments or I'll get some sort of angry email. That's fine. My opinion, should you do it, depends on the situation. It's a 50-50. I see situations where you would and you wouldn't, but that's the fun one. Let's go ahead and jump number two, please. All right, let's go to another fun one, alcohol and tobacco. And I see all sorts of people that say, I don't drink and I don't smoke, and why would I keep it? Very fair. Absolutely fair. Um, the other reason that I see is it's going to be completely useless. In times of absolute chaos and panic, people are going to want, you know, beans, bullets, and Band-Aids. Who's going to come to you for a pack of cigarettes? Okay, I can see your point. Very fair. On mine, the way that I envision it, and again, that's my opinion, I can be completely wrong. In the very beginning of everything, you're going to see a lot of people go after items such as cigarettes, uh, tobacco, alcohol, things like that, because it is a habit. And they know that there's only a certain amount, you know, in circulation. And after things go bad, they're probably not going to get mass made. You're going to whole make a lot of things, but mass made. And so they're going to be looking for those items because for them, they have a habit that they want to feed. And so that becomes more important to them than other things that they probably should be prepping for. Remember, when the pandemic hit, people went out and mass bought toilet paper. That boggles my mind to this day, but that's kind of the people that we go through and we deal with. So is alcohol and tobacco a good thing? If you know you already smoke or drink, what's wrong with having a little bit more on hand? If you don't, I understand. Alcohol has medical uses if you get the right kind. But it's a very good bartering item because you get somebody that really likes their alcohol or it's been a long time and they really like that drink just as a comfort thing. You might be able to really trade up. Normally, it would be uh, a loaf of homemade bread would get you, you know, 10 bullets or whatever the trade is. But suddenly, this actual bottle of name brand alcohol that cost you $20 now might get you a whole firearm. Maybe they're that desperate for it. So is it a good thing? Yeah, I, I, in my opinion, it is. Are you going to do it? It's completely up to you. So let's go ahead and move to number three. Number three on our list. Here we go again. Food and water. And the reason that I hear all the time is, no, I, I need all the food and water I can possibly get. Okay, very valid. Yeah, I agree. You're definitely going to need a lot of food and water if you get a long-term situation that happens. But, again, it's building community. If you get somebody that you cross paths with that, you know, might be a coworker, and you give them, you know, an apple and a little bottle of water, maybe it helps build your community. Yes, I get you. You have OPSEC and security issues. Uh, there's a lot of concerns for that. I get it. But again, bartering is all about situation. It's the same thing in times of peace as it's going to be in the times of, you know, the apocalyptic end. So if the situation doesn't feel right, if the person you're trying to barter with seems, you know, gives you that gut feeling of don't do this, probably not a good idea. But if it's somebody you might be semi-familiar with, or maybe it's the family that is five miles down the road, their friends and family are there in their community, your friends and family are over here, what's the harm in you guys bartering different items? We grow a bunch of corn and you know, have cows so we make milk and cheese. You guys have a bunch of chickens and grow wheat. 
you guys trade and everybody gets plentiful and they're happy. So I don't see the harm in it. Again, it depends on the situation. The people that don't want to barter food and water fully understand it. I get it. I know I'll get angry emails. It's okay. But at least give it some thought. There is situations where giving food and water could be beneficial. For now, let's go to the next one. All right, here we go. Number four for the list, medical. And the thing that I see all the time is the same as pretty much all the other ones. It's very hard to replace if almost irreplaceable, and you're going to need all you can get. Okay, fair, fair and valid. I get it. But what happens if you can build, you know, community? You have somebody that is in a, let's say, non-life threatening situation. You come across somebody that you've seen a couple of times. Um, they have a real bad headachey, migraine, whatnot, and you can spare six pills of an aspirin or, or acetaminophen or something like that. To them, you know, in a situation where your head's been pounding and, you know, you, it hurts to open your eyes and all that, and you give them a tiny little bit, that might be the deciding factor for them to trust you. You got to remember that when panic is ensuing and, and, you know, everything's up in flames and the whole world's ending and whatnot, that there's going to be a lot of trust issues between a lot of people. And a tiny bit can go a long way. And you got to look at it as some of the stuff that you can do. Medical is an extreme trust builder. You can really bring communities together. You can bring people together. If you can treat illnesses, sicknesses, injuries, things like that. Again, that goes with what you can spare, what you can make, the knowledge that you have. It's an extreme importance. Medical is, is often overlooked and hygiene is often overlooked and things like that. So I get it. And again, just what I said, it's going to be built on situation. You know, if a guy has been harassing, you know, your group and, and loaded to the teeth with weapons and then all this other stuff. And then he falls down and sprains his ankle. You help them, that's up to you. Uh, but it's one of those ones, open your mind about it, look at the situation, read what's going on, decide each and every time if it's a good idea or it's a bad idea. Maybe you're going to run into it to where a lot of them are bad ideas. You might run into one or two where it's good ideas, but if you've closed it off, you don't know what you could have, you know, made out of that situation. So let's move to one final one. All right, here we go. Let's round it out. Number five, tools and other resources. Now, again, it's going to be one of the same old adages that we've heard with all the other ones. No, I'm going to need them all. They're going to be hard to replace, if not irreplaceable. Again, same answer with all the other ones. I understand. Very valid. I get it. But when you have somebody come on, maybe it's somebody that you've known and that you can somewhat trust, you know, maybe you need to feel them out. You haven't seen them in a couple months. Um, maybe it is somebody from, you know, down the road or whatnot that you see on occasion. In order to give them resources of things like just a pair of work gloves or a shovel or whatnot for you to go through and dig all the latrines by yourself for the next 20 years is not going to be very fun to have two people digging the latrines with two shovels cuts the time down in half. And then if you can get more people involved, more shovels, you know, when people stumble into your thing, whether it is family meeting you at your bug out location, maybe they went through a lot of their resources. So to have extra resources on hand for them. Now, granted, yes, that's not bartering. I get it. You're kind of giving them to resupply. I get it. 
But let's say that you guys had six shovels in your little, you know, bug out location or at home or whatnot. And somebody steals a shovel. Um, two of your shovels break. Um, one is a square head shovel instead of, you know, a pointed shovel. And so it's not very good for actual, you know, breaking the ground or maybe you know, whatever happened. So now you're down to one shovel. If you need more shovels, how are you going to get them if you don't barter? And if they think like you, that you don't barter tools and resource items, how are you going to get another shovel? There's a lot of things throughout this whole list that I think people don't give the credit to that things are going to happen. You know, you try your best to be prepared for everything and for every event, and it's just not going to happen. It just, it will not. You know, that's the whole premise of life is that nothing is perfect. And if you're talking about apocalyptic event, then I'm sorry, perfect just went out the window. So you're going to need items. You're definitely going to need all sorts of resources, all sorts of tools, medical items, food, uh, self-defense, ammunition, things like that. And if everybody will not barter, then everybody's doomed you know so you have to be able to have some sort of level of trust or whatnot so that way you can resupply they can resupply trust gets built and whatever happens of the zombie apocalypse or you know aliens or whatever that communities can work together start trusting and we can start rebuilding civilization after everything goes but for that let's go ahead and move to a final thought so we can wrap this up all right, so we just went through the five topic slash items for bartering. Now, hopefully, if you were against bartering, maybe this opened your mind just a little bit. If you still don't feel comfortable, then don't do it. You know, I'm not going to sit here and do everything I can to change your mind because I'm right and you're wrong. It's never going to happen. Maybe for you, bartering isn't going to work. And I get it. I get it. Prepping is not a one size fits all. Everybody has different needs, different comfort levels, and different things like that. What I am saying is that if you are completely going to barter, you know, you stocked up on a hundred of every item that you have, then maybe it's one of the things that you can look at this and see all the different people that were against it, and maybe you need to dial it back a bit. Bartering is not going to be 100%. There is people out there that is going to take advantage. There's people out there that see that you have an abundance and they're just going to want to take it from you. So it's a 50-50 game. I agree with both sides. I think that bartering is going to be an invaluable thing that after an event happens, you're going to have to basically do it to survive. Do I think that not doing it is a good idea. In some situations, absolutely. It's not a good idea to barter with those people. Um, you just kind of have to feel it out. It's going to be a, a gut instinct. You're going to have to kind of hone your people skills, listen to your intuition, um, listen to other members in your group, your mag, your tribe, your family, things like that, whoever's with you. And, you know, if, if something doesn't feel right, then don't do it. You know, that's going to be probably your safest bet in anything. And if you can look at the situation and everything looks okay, this might be that first step to where more people come together. And as things go through and whatever it is, whether we're talking about short term, which is a flood of fire, whether we're talking about something that's mid-level, like um, some sort of uh, bad storm that knocked the power out for everything or whatnot, or even long term. To be able to help somebody else in a true sense that they are not some evil whatever, that they are just your average everyday person, you helping them will probably lead to them helping you or them helping somebody else. And really, that's really kind of what makes the world go around. You, them, help. So hopefully that opened your eyes to everything. But with that, like, subscribe, share this with somebody you love, hit the little bell notification so that way you will be notified every time that we have new content, 
check us out on Facebook by going searching for The Rural Report. And we do new content over there. We do interactive stuff. We do a lot of lives and Q&As and whatnot. And with that, I'm just going to remind you to remain united because we're all prepping in this together.